Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today, what is change of basis, right? What, what does it mean? Why do we want to do it? What does it have to do with different coordinate systems? Why, the, why, is, the, why is there no kind of preferred choice or whatever? So let's jump right into it because it's, yes, it's uh, very enlightening to see a lot of pictures. So um, let's say I have a blue matrix. And let's say I have an orange matrix. And the blue matrix, <laughs> my matrix M, is this very easy kind of rotation-like matrix, right? So you, if you if you want to look at it, let's say uh, how it acts on the unit square, then it takes a unit square, and I really should do this unit square. Let's say the, the red takes a unit square and it rotates it by ninety degrees. That's exactly how this matrix is built this is kind of a 90 degree rotation matrix and you can see it here in the picture which is kind of the action on r3 uh, r3 of course r2 so it, it, it's this rotation around this is very very um uh, regular rotation around the origin oh yeah very nice matrix uh, very easy to write down um 90 degree rotation and then there's this orange matrix it looks, I mean, look at the M matrix, right? Zero, minus one, one, zero. And this matrix looks a little bit crazy. It looks a bit random. Obviously it's not random, I've chosen it, um, but it looks much, much, much more complicated. Like one of, a th one of one third, I mean, minus one over three, four over three, whatever. It, it looks pretty, pretty complicated, pretty random. And if you look at its action, let's say on R2 here again, it, it's actually not so much different from 190 degree rotation. It's still kind of a rotation around the origin. As you can see, it's a little bit disturbed, like it's a little bit stretched. It doesn't really rotate 90 degrees. It's a bit slower. And you can see it here on the square as well. So if you would work out the action of, of, of N, what you would see is that it's not quite a 90 degree rotation. It's whatever. Uh, 80 degree rotation, something like that. And it also stretches and scales the vectors a little bit. But in some sense, they are not really different, right? They kind of do the same thing. They, they look a little bit different. One of them stretches, it's not, one of them is 90 degrees, the other one is more like an 80 degree-ish rotation, but they don't do something crazily different, right? They, they look pretty, pretty similar. Um, when you look at their actions, on spaces. When you when you just look at the matrices M and N, they look pretty different to me. I don't know how you feel, they look pretty different. Hmm. This is a little bit weird. So you have two matrices, they look different, but they kind of do the same thing. So the question that kind of base change, base change wants to answer is, in what sense are these actually equal matrices, right? In what sense are they equal? They're obviously not equal, as you can see, but they're doing very similar things. So maybe actually they are equal up to some, some yoga. And yes, they are equal up to some yoga and some very natural yoga. And this yoga is called uh, base change. So the idea is as follows. Now I still have my blue matrix and I still have my orange matrix. And I, I cheated. Of course, I already calculated the base change matrix and the base change matrix is to say my green matrix here. And it has an inverse, which I also calculated, not so important, but my base change matrix is my green matrix. And now I can look at the action of my green matrix and you could write it down. Let's say the green matrix, how does it work? Let me do it again. So the, you see the image of the first vector in the first column of my green matrix. So it goes roughly to mine uh, one over two and minus one, that's roughly here. Uh, you see the image of the second one in the second, so it goes to roughly to one one. Right, it starts here, it goes roughly to one one. So this action is a little bit like a clockwise rotation by something like forty five degrees and a little bit of scaling. Okay, that's not too bad. So here's a matrix P, and it rotates clockwise and scales a little bit. And then we can use our orange matrix again, our N matrix. And remember, it basically turns everything around something like 80 degrees and scales things a bit. And this, if you calculated it, this, this is what, what it would do. So it would end up here. 
right? Rotating it now 80 degrees counterclockwise and you would end up here. So this is what people would call first P then F. Okay, not bad, but we can also look now at our blue matrix. As I remember that the blue matrix is kind of a very easy thing. It just rotates 90 degrees and that's what it does. And the green matrix as we have seen now rotates kind of back by roughly whatever, 45 degrees and scales a bit. And you would end up with this picture. And this is what people would call first M and then P, okay? And observe that those two are really the same. So in other words, um, I'm interested, right? We are interested in the blue matrix and the orange matrix. And if you have this intermediate matrix P, then you can really make them the same. You can force the action to be the same. And those matrices, if you would check it, are actually the same. So you can really force them to be the same by using a certain intermediate matrix P, which either changes the source or the target, depending on, on where you put it. And then they really act in the, exactly the same way. And this matrix, the, the, uh, the green one, is usually called the base change matrix or the change of coordinates matrix. So it kind of makes matrices the same if you allow your a different coordinate system in a, in a certain way. Let me explain. So again, we, we still have, have our um, blue and orange matrices. And instead of considering them as matrices, I could consider them as linear maps. Uh, in this case, I would like to consider as the M as a linear map from the standard choice of coordinate system to the standard choice of coordinate system. And this just means M is, has exactly the form you think it has. It's, it's this one. So in this standard coordinate system, M is just the matrix you have seen before. For N, I want to do something, something different. So for N, I would like to choose a different coordinate system, namely this one for both source and target. And yeah, if you look carefully, it's actually, these are actually the entries of my, of my P matrix, of my green matrix, right? One over two minus one, 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 one over two minus one, one, one. And I, I can consider N as just a linear map, but I can evaluate it on, on my different um, uh, coordinate system. So let's do this, right? M is pretty easy. So what M does is, uh, well, you can see it, it sends the first vector to this one and it sends the second vector to this one and in my new coordinate system. So my input here is my coordinate system. So my source and my output is also my, so I, I, in the output, I will all, uh, need, also, uh, need to also consider the, um, the coordinate system for, that I've chosen for my output. And of course, this vector is just one times the second basis vector. And this vector is just minus one times the first basis vector. And this is why the matrix actually looks like this in this coordinate system. If you would do the same for my, um, for my orange matrix, and now you really feed in the show, right? I've chosen two different, a uh, different coordinate system. So I've, feed in two different coordinate vectors in my matrix. And I calculate the result. And now I evaluate the result against my different coordinate system. And well, what you get is, well, this is just a calculation. If you, if you, if you uh, do n times this vector, you get one, one, which is just one times the second uh, basis vector. If you do n times one, one, you get this one, which is just minus one times this first basis vector. In other words, although our matrix, the orange matrix looked a little bit silly in the standard coordinates, in this coordinates, my orange matrix is actually exactly this one, right? It's the same matrix, just in a different coordinate system. And that's the whole idea of base change. So actually those matrices are the same in a different coordinate system. They're not just doing the same thing, or roughly the same thing, they are the same in, in a different coordinate system. 
So up to change of coordinates, um, M and M actually are the same linear map. And that's the whole point. That's the whole point about base change. So basically what it means is a base change means, well, you have an old basis uh, and you have a new basis. And let's just say everything is of, of whatever, some k to the n. And then you can define the base change vector. Um, you can write down coordinate vectors in those. So for each vector, you, you can write down coordinate. Oops, this was too long. You can write down a coordinate vector in these bases. So I can write down a coordinate vector in the old bases, which I should have put in, in green. I could write down a coordinate vector in the new bases. And the point is, they might be abstractly the same, but the coordinates might be different because you have chosen different coordinate systems. I will show you an explicit example on the next slide. And the change of base matrix, so this was my green matrix, is just the matrix that kind of exchanges uh, the two coordinate systems. In other words, really, it, it's it's kind of the, 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 the translation matrix, the interpolation matrix, whatever you want to call it, between the old and the new coordinate system. And what this means for, for, for maps? Well, let's let's have a look here. So I told you that NP equals PM. So if NP equals PM, this just, of course, just means that M is actually equal to uh, P, P inverse, N, right? I just I just pull P to the other side. And that's exactly what's happening. So um, two linear maps are the same up to choice of coordinates. If you can find some base change matrix that such that N equals, oh, I've written it the other way around, of course, N equals P, M, P inverse, which is the same as I wrote here. Just I, I just push the P to piece to the other side, my bad. Um, anyway, so what does this really mean in, in practice? Well, you can choose, it's a very simple idea. So what is the preferred uh, coordinate system for R3? Well, there is no preferred coordinate system. All of us are biased. So all of us would say, oh yeah, of course, it's the, the X, Y, Z axis is the preferred coordinate system, but not really, right? Why should it be? For some problems, it isn't. It really depends on your problem and everything. So, and that's exactly kind of the whole point of, of uh, having the notion of base change because some problems actually get easier in different coordinate systems. Here's just a very explicit example. I'm not saying this one gets easier, it's just a very explicit example of what happens. So here's my X, Y, Z coordinate system, but I could also have uh, an X prime, Y prime, Z prime coordinate system. Why not? My, so those three vectors and if you do the calculation, then, well, let's say you have a very silly vector, the one, one, one vector. In this coordinate system, it looks like one, one, one. So here is uh, uh, its coordinate vector in the first coordinate system. And the other one looks like one over two, three over two, one over two. So here's the other one in the other coordinate system. And I've illustrated what's going on uh, below here. So here's my X, Y, and Z axis. And well, what I do here is pretty easy. I go one in X direction, I go one in Y direction, I go one in Z direction, and that's exactly this funny vector here, right? But I could also have my um, X prime, Y prime, and Z prime axis system. And what I would do is I would go one over two in X in X prime direction. I would go the three over two in, in Y direction and I go, would go one over two in, in uh, Z prime direction. And it's the same vector. It's a one, one, one vector just in a different coordinate system. And as I said, because you never know what real life really wants, what real life, well, real life comes to you with a problem. Okay, real life, whatever, whatever real life is, comes to you with a problem and you never know what is a good coordinate system a priori. You just have to look at the problem to see what is a good coordinate system. And that's why you want this notion of base change. The notion of base change is nothing else than formalizing 
I want to have a different coordinate system for my project. And that's just it. So thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you next time.